Hi, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. It is Saturday, January 28th, 2023, and it's time to do the Saturday situation. This is a weekly recap where we go over projects I'm working on, things that are coming up, and just different things um, related to quilting in general and what's going on in my world. Monday of this week, posted my hopscotch quilt and the pattern for it. This is the free pattern. Just go to softsquares.com and go under products. Slip, go down to the patterns and you'll see two free patterns. One is this one and the other one is Bitty Goodness, which is one that I had done last year and you guys helped me name it. But this is actually the quilt behind me. I will be finishing this in the next couple of days. I have decided to put this border on it. It's seven inch dark blue border. And so I've got enough to go around all four sides. And then I'm also going to, it's doubled, <laughs> um, bind it with the same color once I get it quilted. So this is uh, probably as far as you're gonna see of that, but I have decided this border and it looks so nice. Thanks for your input on that too. You're probably wondering why that quilt is still in that condition. It's because I've been too busy playing with other things. <laughs> I know I'm going to put this border on it and I have the border and the binding just hanging out. I'll get to it. <laughs> At least I know how it's going to finish and that'll go fast when I do. Now we're on to this. That's the back. This is for grandson who really likes Paw Patrol. This is going to be the back. This is going to be, I'm thinking of order, but it also might turn into blocks. I'm for sure going to put this in here. I think I have about 20. Maybe what I'll do is just alternate with just these two colors for the center and then do a solid border. That actually will make quite a bit. Yes, that's what's going to happen. Did a little project. I purchased this. It's a pattern, but really what you're getting is you're getting the metal frame and this pattern comes with it. So it's like an easel. And what this is, is a little organization thing for the easel. I followed the pattern and I ad-libbed, surprise. <laughs> and here's my version of it with a few things in it. And you can see it's got the metal frame and the different pockets. This is a pin cushion down here, isn't that cute? These have elastic pockets and they're boxed at the bottom. And then we have pockets here, pockets here, and pockets here at the top. So they're all nice and thin, cute little pockets. This is gonna go by my embroidery machine because I don't need a whole lot of notions and I don't have a lot of room. So right now I'm putting it here and actually this would do better up here. But the reason I have it down here is because I had extra fabric when I used fat quarters. So I made myself a little dust cover because it's dusty. Lots of thread and cotton blowing around here. And look how cute that is. So it just sits on top. <laughs> and then I took some Rick Rack and I had one more little piece of fabric. And I thought, you know what? Sometimes there is something that you need and it might be good to have out. out. But now <laughs> I have this cute little thing and I, um, I had a lot of fun with it. So this is a five and a half by eight and a half frame. It's called So Organized by So Organized Designs. The pattern is included when you buy the frame. And I picked this up at my girlfriend's quilt shop but I'm pretty sure if you Googled it, you'll find it anywhere. And I did a little bit of, of taping of me making it and I'll show you some of that. This is a stand-up organizer and it has some pockets that are deep. They've got the elastic. They have some flat pockets up here that are meant for long, tall things. And there's even pockets up here 
and then um, or probably one big pocket up here. We'll see when we get into it. And then um, it all goes on here. My first time making it. Let's we'll see what we can do. The company is called So Organized Design. And they even give you their little label and the elastic along with the uh, instructions. I don't have a free pattern for this, but hopefully you can find it. Pin cushion, pockets, 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 dust cover. That was my contribution to the pattern because I had leftover fabric. As well as this extra, <laughs> extra little pocket. It was a lot of fun. I rearranged my sewing room a little bit, actually quite a bit. Furniture hasn't moved, but the machines have been moving. And so I'm very pleased and more motivated and excited to be getting my embroidery going. So I can't really show you what's going on right now because it's a mess, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be doing. I have a new Kimberbell CD that I picked up this week. It is called, Oh, the possibilities for winter and Valentine's Day too. So it's got snowmen and hearts and it's for first part of winter. Really cute little items. And um, again, looking for those Kimberbell things. I'm really excited. If you recall, last week I had shown you several things from different fabric hauls and patterns. And I was really debating what to do with this bundle of fabric. I'm still trying to figure out what to do, but I think I might have solved something. Please tell me what you think about this. This is what I want to use on this pattern. It's a Moda Powder Call Reflection. It only takes 12 charm packs. This happens to have 15, and with that 15, I, if I wanted to, I could make one more row and make it a square. We're really close to being square. But um, this is Fairy Frost, which means it's ombre or um, it's called ombre fairy dust, sorry. And so it's got a really light end and a really dark end. And like on this one, it's not gonna be an issue, but on some of the others, the really light ones, it's gonna be a big issue when it gets to that really light side. So I was really torn on what to do and I decided to do this, which is black background. And it won't matter how light it gets. There'll still be contrast. And this green was actually a really bad example of that. Here's one that I was really more concerned about. It is this tan one. And look what happens. I mean, <laughs> it disappears into my shirt. So using it against black, it won't matter. And I think that'll be really striking so right now that's my plan so i'm going to start cutting these up and i'm going to stick to my original plan where i'm going to do the 12 fat quarters out of here that i really want to do pulling three to the side and that way if i decide i don't want to keep going making it any bigger i'm not committed to all the different colors <laughs> which means i am pulling this color out because it is pretty much similar to this one. Very, very close. And I'm also going to pull out this dark green one. Um, 
and just not loving it. So it, it might work if I want or need extra colors, but that's coming out for that reason. And then there's a several in the peach family, obviously not this one, that are really close together. And so I was thinking of taking the really light one out, but maybe I'll take this middle shade out. That way it's more um, of a contrast between whatever two I have going on in there. And that leaves me with these. So we're gonna do this. I'm not gonna actually assemble it until I know, you know, what colors I'm using, but I'm gonna build the blocks with these and then see if I want to do more. This is gonna go on for a while. <laughs> it's not gonna be a quick project. But if this is something you're interested in, it is a pattern you can purchase through Moda. It's called Reflections, and it's part of their solids pack, or so solids line. And it this one is 66 by 84 when you're all done with it. But if I decide to row that extra, add that extra row of blocks, it will only take three more blocks. And it should make it really close to square. All right, so there is my update on reflections. Thank you for your help, everybody. Oh, I lied. This is part of that too. I pulled it out and didn't put it in. There we go. Here, I don't even know how I was holding it. <laughs> Here are all the colors. You know what's interesting is there's no blue in this grouping. No blue. So, there you go. And actually, these three are quite pretty together. They could be a standalone project. You don't have to use everything you have, but these three actually go really well together and I might be able to make a fat quarter friendly project and have the same line. I don't know, pretty. I'm excited to start working with that. So these are all the orange ombres. I have two, four, six, eight, ten blocks that came out of one fat quarter with the equal amount of black fabric cut into strips. So that is where I've just stuck those. But you can see from one ombre strip or fat quarter because of its variegation, how you get the different tones, the really light to the really dark. And here is one that has not been cut up yet. And each one's a little different. Some of them have more of a drastic shift, but this is what I started out with basically. And it comes up with this. So I'm gonna have a lot of different shades of the, the blocks. So we'll see what I end up with when I'm done. I am using the black because I wanted um, there to be contrast when you get to the light and white would just wash it out and limit my options. So there we go. That did not take that long. And since I have already pre-cut all of this, I really think once I sit down and start sewing, it will go quickly. Now because of um, how I cut these, I need to make sure that all the darker ends up in one spot and the lighter don't just randomly pick it up. But I did cut these in groups. So you can see I've got several in a pile. 
I'm excited. Um, this actually came together quite quickly and we'll see how long it actually takes me when I start making more blocks. So that is the progress on this. This is my extra. These are my sashings and borders. There will be more going on with this. Block nine of the Annie's Silver Jubilee Daydream Quilt is here. It's called Sparkling Star. And the star looks like this. So watch for the video to come out where I show you how to build it. And that's block nine. And then they sent all this fabric, including some extra for the this looks like it's the border fabric, that dark blue. So they just enclose a little at a time in these kits um, to save on postage, I think. Slip it in with the same stuff. So I'm ramping up and starting on my projects. We're getting a bunch of them going. I have already gone ahead and pre-cut the fabric that I need for three yard quilts. I'm going to be making this one called Allure and it comes out of this book. And ironically, my fabric colors are really close to that. And it will be a little bit bigger. And then I have some border fabric that's part of the print that I will be using out here. So I didn't save any of the fabric for the border or the binding. I went as big as I could. So I've got my backing, my border, and then my three fabrics for out front. Watch for the video when that comes out. And I got that one ready. I just ordered something else from Four Winds Traders. This is called Tiny Town. It's a nine month block of the month and they're all little houses. And because of the glare, I take it out of the bag. It's got a lot of patterns in it, a lot of instructions. I see color pictures in here too. So it's showing you what the different blocks look like in color. I like that. So it's telling me to cut up the line. So what I'll probably do, honestly, is get their blocks put together, like what I plan to do with the Christmas ones, and then add this and its pattern to their own little bag. Aren't those cute? So it's called Tiny Town. It is by Bunny Hill Designs. That is that. Okay, guys, one more thing I want to show you. This is ugly Christmas sweater embroidery. These are little mug rugs. It has a, a DVD, or sorry, a CD, DVD <laughs> for the patterns. It is, does it say on the inside here? Is it? Machine embroidery designs, SVG cutting, files included. That means the brother scan and cut. And this is by Bruce Allen Designs for fabric confetti. There they are. I'm all about the ugly sweaters. I don't know why, but I'm kind of obsessed with them. From the ugly Christmas sweater quilts that I made and I still have some kits available for sale as well as some pre-cut um, quilts ready for me to just start sewing together. There's six designs for embroidery mug rugs, applique mug rugs, there's also six, as well as embroidery designs only, there are six. And they have six sweaters, basically they're a little bit different. Three, three and a half by four ish. One of them is three and a half by five. Um, and then here they put one on a towel. <laughs> They're cute. Again, that was Four Winds Traders. They are on Etsy. And I've been really happy with the products that they have and how they ship things. I'm also have figured out the fabrics I want to use and I have them separated by these pouches for the two different Christmas block of the month 
patterns. I won't go into a whole lot of detail right now, but this is this one from the American Patchwork and Quilting website, which is a magazine, but they also provide stuff on their website, and this is a block of the month type program. Go online and see if you can get to it. I don't know if it was free for those who had a membership or if it's free to everybody, but that was free. So I've got my fabrics figured out. I mean, I'm gonna go through and start cutting all the pieces out and put them in their own little bags, like I was talking about doing for that um, project with the little houses. And that's my goal is to get them ready to go so I can, so right now I'm kind of in the mood to cut. <laughs> I don't know if you ever get like that. So this one right here is the Peppermint Lane block of the month. This one is by It's So Emma. Um, it is 12 month quilt along. I, but everything you need is in here, just like with the other one. And I've got the fabric figured out for that. It's all in here. Same thing, going to cut my pieces out and have them ready. But at least I got that far. That was actually a big undertaking to figure out what fabric I wanted to use on both of these. I did a shop tour of my girlfriend's quilt shop. They have three locations and they just opened one in Orem, which is where I live, Orem, Utah. And so I went in and I visited with the manager. Her name is Rebecca. She gave us a tour of the store and uh, gave us a lot of background on a lot of different things. So watch that video. It is posted. It came out on Friday. I have picked up a couple things here that I want to talk about. One is their birthday shopping discount. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have to be, you probably have to be in their system, but I don't know if you have to be like part of a club. It doesn't say, but your birthday month, you get half of your age off in a discount. So I'll be turning 56 in April, which means my discount would be 23. No, it's 28. Oh my gosh, 28% discount. And they will actually take it off the most expensive item. But that's how that works. It's during the month of your birthday and it's a one-time thing, but that's how that works. They also have Blossom and Grow Your Embroidery Skills at the Kimberbell Garden Guild. I don't know enough about that. Join my girlfriend's quilt, quilt shop virtually on March 10th. I think this is where in the video she was talking about whether you get a free download if you're part of the club. If not, it's just $10. But if you are part of the club, you get the, the, the item that they're showing plus a bonus for free. Not 100% sure, but that's what I think. Something to make you smile, something to learn, which is a daily demo and a daily deal. Then there's more, but those, those are highlights. This is, but anyway, March 10th. And then I picked this up. It's a pack, a little pamphlet. And it talks about their different locations. They have 24-7 online support. Um, one thing I did learn, this is, is Chris, the gal who owns my girlfriend's quilt shop. And this gal, they told me her name, but I don't remember. It was, that's not really that important. But what this picture represents is they have people in their community. Now she's up in Logan, Utah, up near the Idaho border. But she's helping people in their community that have specialized skills that can do certain things, but are maybe harder to employ doing like a traditional job, meaning it might be someone that would have a hard time getting a job working with the public or um, can't use a computer very well or you know something along those lines, but they can sew. And so she employs them to make their quilt samples, which takes a load off of the managers at the stores so they don't have to stress about trying to get quilt samples made because they're also doing other things including interacting and working with customers so she's it's kind of win-win for everybody the samples come in and they're really pretty and the store didn't have to make them and then 
someone was given a job that probably would not have been able to to work otherwise now they do have the three things at three which is more what this is talking about just above that picture um three o'clock mountain time on facebook and on their web page the main page they do three things monday through friday they talk about while i was there i picked up a couple things <laughs> one of them is this and during the video you'll actually see this it is an embroidery or a cross stitch hoop it's one of those plastic ones instead of the old fashioned wood ones and i I like how simple that is and I'm getting some stuff for cross stitch because sometimes I just don't feel like sewing or cutting or filming so I, I go through phases and right now I'm kind of in the phase of I just want to get things ready that's why I'm not really concerned about sewing that together but I've been making a lot of other blocks and cutting things out so when the the urge comes like, hey, let's sit and sew. I can do that. And so as far as this, the embroidery, same thing. I might want to just sit and do some, some cross stitch or some embroidery. And I'm excited to be able to do that again because I had carpal tunnel surgery. I couldn't, I just couldn't do things. And now I can. All right. So anyway, in addition to that, I picked up this really cute little kit called 10 Minute Table Runner. And it has in the fabrics that you need. It does include the pattern, the backing, and the binding, as well as embellishments. I don't know if there are embellishments or not, but let's look at it. Not all of their kits come with a pattern. And I just wanted something quick. Aha, uh -huh. buttons. And this is what comes in the package. So you can see what it says should be in there. It also tells you the name of the pattern. And it's a 10 minute table runner called Fireworks. And here is our pattern. Make one for every season, it says. You need a third yard fabric for your main and a half yard fabric for the back and the border. Uh, it looks quite simple. Look at that. No wonder it's called a 10 minute table runner. So nice, right? Yeah. I just needed a little kind of a mindless, sorry, just needed kind of a mindless project to have on hand. Right, buttons, button, button, who's got buttons? I do. So there's that. I want to make this. I um, got this at my girlfriend's quilt shop. This is really cute. It's just a sewing machine cover. It's basically kind of a long blanket uh, for your quilt or for your machine. It has a button to close it. You just measure how big you need to make it. It's basically the cathedral window technique. Oh wow. And this is the fabric that they used on here. Now I saw it in person and it was so cute. I really wanted it. And it's by Sweetwater. And you can see just how sweet it is. These pictures are really, or prints are really, really cute. However, I have this in my stash called So Wonderful. This came off, it's called Renew. <laughs> and then here's the basics, which I'll use in the background. But So Wonderful and they're all sewing related in pastels and i'm thinking i want to use that because it's hard to find things to use this material on and this is sewing related and i like it and it's for me so there we go and i probably will make more than one first we're going to make one and see so i'm going to be doing this project with this fabric you can do it any way you want but I did pick up that fabric thinking I was going to use it until I found this in my stuff. And this is really what I want to use. I also placed an order through Etsy with a company called Glitter by Sky. And I'm thinking embellishments 
for when I do quilting or quilts or wall hangings or non washable things. Although supposedly there's glue that will make us, you can wash it. I don't trust it, but that's not what I'm doing it for. So anyway, they have all these cute little packages of small, this is actually a big one, like Halloween um, sprinkles. They're not edible, don't eat them. <laughs> but it has a lot of different little things in there. Um, there's two more in here. Looks like they just, I picked what I wanted and they packaged them by size inside these little packages. So I don't know if you can see that. There's a Halloween candy and this like a New Year's Eve type theme. This is a uh, lollipop. I got an owl and the word boo. And then there's five little teeny packages in here of just small glitter. I've got light blue, yellow, purple, multi, and two pink. And one of the pink is kind of has iridescent and the other one has like, like summer type things inside it. I don't know why I'm thinking I don't need to open these. They did it just to get it to me. Let's look inside. So they're just these little um, pillow pouches with stuff in them. But that's cute. Here's the blue, here's the yellow, it has little, what's in there, melon, strawberries, purple, here's pink, and I see more fruit in this, apples, and this is a multicolor with a lot of confetti in it. All right, so let's go back to these others I did not open. I'm not opening this because this is its package. <laughs> that is that. But this one, again, it's Glitter by Sky. Love Halloween stuff. And then just that black and gold star. All right, so there's one more of these. It is a flat shipping amount, and these are super inexpensive, but to make it worth it, because it's a flat shipping amount, I placed an order for a bunch of different things. And here's a little bit bigger package. This looks like multi bit with the purple. Let's see. I don't know, maybe there's the same amount. No, there's not the same amount in both. There's definitely more in this one. And that's more purple. This is pink. <laughs> oh, look how cute that is. This is pinks and purples, but the purples were sticking to the plastic. And the pinks are... Okay. Now I'm questioning the purple, if it's actually part of the... I don't know. It's sure cute. You might be getting reflection, so I'm sorry. And then the last little guy is, oh, I think I should do this. I'm gonna leave these in the pouches. So, fun stuff. These are fun to put in greeting cards. For years and years, that's what I did. And then greeting cards became less popular for mailing and you could do like the e-card and stuff. And let's face it, I got lazy. So I stopped doing the cards. But that does. I mean, I won't start, but this is something that is typical of me to use in a cart. I have some more boxes here. Oh, Rub Spab Stash. I placed an order. I also have a big box here from Keepsake Quilting. Let's open those. All right. Here is my of goodies. Okay, look how cute. It's a vintage quilter, or I'm sorry, vintage garden by quilt Flamingo Toes. My goodness. Beverly McCullough. So it uses hexes. 
We need 18 fat quarters, um, white, half yard for your background, the, the green, the little pass through there, it's one and a quarter yards for that, and then four yards background. Seven yards backing. Oh, this is bigger. 72 by 86. Isn't that pretty? I'm guessing this is a template. It is. The triangle template and the half hexi template. Those are big hexes. Oh my goodness. So it's actually, you're going to make it half of the time, or half. <sighs> you're not going to make the whole hexi. You see how this is going, or you, the lines? You're going to sew half. So you're basically going to be able to put together by rows. That is going to be easy -er. <laughs> and nice. All right, they have their little um, flyer just reminding this that Four o'clock on thir Wednesdays Pacific on uh, YouTube. They do a live with Christy and some other things. We have another one here. If it will come out. This is called Spring. And look how cute that is. It looks like it has applique going down on top of these in addition to the blocks that are happening behind it. And the pattern has quite a bit to it and I can see through the paper and see that we have applique. Yep, big pieces of applique. It's called Spring at 78 by 92. You need five and a half yards backing fabric. This one needs seven. Wow. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking that the quilt will be small like what I'm seeing here. I still keep going back to that one, but those are big hexes, which means it will actually be easier to put together because you're not dealing with teeny tiny little things. All right, so back to this. This is called Spring. By Coach House Designs. We have Moda All Stars all in a row. There's 24 row designs, so you can make what you want, decide how you want to do it, and build your own quilts. So, <laughs> a lot of templates. Here's some some different ways that they put things together out of this book. <laughs> There's a Scotty Snowman. I'm really excited. I just, this is where my brain is, this type of project. And then the last thing I picked up is a quilt packet. It's a project. This one is called Paradise Lattice. This is the pattern, but it has the kit and it uses panels. It ends up being 52 by 64. Doesn't that look pretty? But it's actually easier than you think because the panels are in there and doing their job. Here we go. Paradise Fabric Collection by Maywood Studio. We are gonna have to look at that. This was on sale. Looks like I saved about 20% on it. I don't know if it was a sale of the day. I had a coupon. I don't think I had a coupon. I'm really not sure. After I make my purchases, I tend to forget what I did. <laughs> All right, so this is the fabric for here. The borders. Isn't that rich and just gorgeous? Oh, fun. They're using this on the center, the inner border, right here. This fabric right here is the center 
square of each of these blocks. So it's right here. This large print. This is the background fabric. <laughs> There's a lot of fabric in here. This is also the background fabric. So the blocks alternate between pink and green. All right, so these are fabrics for the um, cross parts or the X's on the blocks. We have the red, or, sorry, pink block and the green block. And then we have two of these. This is the green background and this is the tan background. And at first glance, I'm not sure. Oh, you know what I know what it is? It's what goes inside between the solids. So this will be fun to make. I also think it might be something that could be used on other type of projects with panels. It might be something I re recirculate, recycle. Okay, so here's the two center pieces. Here's the two cross pieces. Here's the background pieces for the two, the inner border, the center square, and the outer border. You still need your backing, and I'm not even worried about that stuff. Sometimes it's kind of fun to match the backing, but honestly, I usually don't. I mean, I want it to coordinate, but I usually get something a little, little different just to kind of break it up a little bit. <laughs> this. This will be easier. I don't know, right now I'm thinking I have all these fun things I want to do, and some of them I just need to make it easy. So this gave me the impression it was easier. Onto this box from Keepsake. And I put everything in here. If I remember right, these are mostly one yard cuts of fabric. We're going to go through that. Yep, they're all one yard cuts. And then I have a fat quarter bundle and a mystery stash. Let's start with those. Surprise pack. It's batiks. We're going to open that up, but you, you can see there's a lot of color in there. And then this is my. Okay, Bally block print. They said surprise pack, but I think that that's what this is the, the batiks, obviously. And then this is the mystery stash halves. There's eight half pieces of fabric, which means four yards just right here. I'm going to start with the batiks. Prices are not on my invoice. But let's see, this one is 12 pieces. Oh my goodness. I probably should make this closer to you, huh? It's very, very light. Looks like sand. Bally block print. It's definitely tropical, right? Oh, 
on. I skipped over the first couple, so I'll show those to you up close. There's the green, and then there's that pink one. Ooh, and giddy! So fun. I'm gonna try to keep it pretty. I'm going to fold them up like fat quarters in a minute, so it really doesn't matter. All right, so now we're going to go on to our mystery stash half yards, eight of them, 100% cotton, four yards of fabric just in here. I really like keepsake. They are generous and reasonably priced. Okay, all half yards. And they coordinate. Does that look like cork? Half yards. These are all half yard, not fat quarters. So the, all of these were folded over. So they look like a fat quarter, but a fat quarter does not have. <laughs> it has half as much. <laughs> now these other ones I did specifically pick out. And I'm going to guess I got it out of the clearance tab. That's usually where I go. Unless there's something I just have to have, and that's not very often. Or I have a coupon that I can apply to anything. So, I don't know if this is available. Now, sometimes what I'll do is it'll tell you if, like, you want to order five yards of something and there's only three available, it will say, you can't do that, three's your limit. So if there's any of those that are like that, that are small yardage, and I like the print enough, I will just take the whole thing. So some of these might be like a yard and a half, two yards, just because it was low enough, and I don't think it hurts to have extra. Now, I'm thinking three yard quilts doesn't mean that's how these have to be used, but I'm thinking of fabrics that coordinate, and I'm trying to see if maybe they're in, they're packaged in a way that I can see? The answer is no. Okay, I know I have other fabrics from this line. This is Riley Blake Designs, hash, nope, sorry, Watermark. That's called Watermark. And I know this came in a bunch of different colors of blues and grays. Now this one, it feels like it's not a boutique. Kind of looks like that. That is from the same line. I think. I'm just gonna give up on what I thought it was doing. <laughs> this is also Riley Blake. Now this one, it does say watermark on it. This floral one, I'm, I'm really, bothered by this. Uh, designed to be handmade. Studio green. So it, it looks like it's hand print and it's called designed to be handmade. So but this is part of the same collection as that very first one. I have this one. 
And what's cool about it is you notice how it, I'm gonna open it up, goes, it changes across the piece. More snowflakes, lighter, and then more fun. This one is called Fur Flurry, Flurry Friends. Flurry Friends. These all say one yard. So I might not have had the extra options or just did it with these guys. All right, there's the batik. Here's another one. These three right here do coordinate. I do want to put them together. Trying to see what the name of the line is. I believe it's perfectly pink. <sighs> Raspberry Batik. Oh boy, about a third of what I picked up were batiks and I thought I could maybe see what the name of this line was by looking for batik because they won't say on the selvage, but won't that be pretty? These are our batiks. Now they are the same line. The colors are different, but the prints are similar and I plan to put these three together. So let's look at these. Looks like the purple and the pink actually are the same print. Just different colors and then this blue one on top is a little different. I think that would actually be really pretty. Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, here's another batik that matches that light blue one. Okay, that makes me happier. If I did a three yard quilt, I would use one as the border in the binding or something, but it's easy to add more, more flavors, more colors to those three yard quilts. But that's what I'm thinking will happen. We have two more blues. This is called Susan Wingett Home to Roost. And I don't know if it has a direction, it kind of looks like it does, which would be this way. And then this really pretty blue on blue print teeny tiny light blue dots and circles alternating and on the selvage this is by Wyndham and it's called Hudson by Whistler Studios so, that would be good for a number of things. Look how pretty these two are together. I think I could get away with these three. I don't have to make a decision right now curious what you think. Would you add this to this? 
Hmm. Okay, so these are the two that were from the same line at the beginning. And I really was thinking I was getting things in threes, but sometimes you you don't get what you thought you were getting because you don't remember what you had to do. <laughs> and this. I know that there sometimes when I put something in the bath, the shopping cart, I'll change my mind. Or by the time I check out, it's not available. Has that ever happened to you? That's my fabric haul. Week. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I am working on for Monday. I am playing with pre-cuts. We're going to do this cathedral window and a lot of different variations of this. I'm also going to play with the square and a square block, which there is a tutorial for that already that's out. And that would be this. So, and there's a lot more to what I'm doing on Monday. Here's here's a block where I combined both of that. So that's what's happening on Monday. All of this, just come back on Monday, three o'clock mountain and see what I'm making. All right, that's it for today. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thanks for being here today and I'll see you soon. Look, the, that one is moving because of the wind. Yup. The fan is making some wind, that's for sure. Yeah, I love the wind. You love, love the wind? The, yeah. I love wind so much. <laughs> I love, but I love inside wind because of fans. I love oh. wind. See, that's why I love wind. You like inside winds. Yeah, that's why I love that wind. That makes sense. Hurry up. Hurry up. Yeah. <laughs>